Hi, I'm a medical student, and this is my GPA. Hopefully it's good, I haven't found out yet as I'm recording this. I've made YouTube shorts teaching the human anatomy for about a month now, and it's doing pretty good. So I decided to try and make some long form videos too. I really love the human anatomy, and I know you will too. This video is only a compilation. If this video does well, then expect some long form videos about the human anatomy. Please enjoy. Take a look at this. This is your body, and inside your body is your brain. The brain is able to create 1 billion computations per second, more than a modern supercomputer. But I bet you didn't know that it can make decisions for you, even in your sleep. Scientists have discovered that the reason that you have a clearer mind after you sleep is because during your sleep, your mind starts to organize all your thoughts and starts to weigh every option you have. So when you finally wake up, the decision that you've been thinking of all night seems quite easy now. This is crazy. This is your body, and inside your body is your heart. The heart beats a total of 100,000 times a day, pumping 2,000 gallons of blood daily. That's enough to fill a swimming pool. But I bet you didn't know that the heart has a mind of its own, just like the brain. What? It's true. The heart has around 40,000 neurons that can send signals to the brain, which can affect your emotions, stress level, even make decisions for you. So when someone says follow your heart, not your brain, they might have a point. I have a question. When you get a nosebleed, what's the first thing you usually do? You probably tilt your head backwards to try to stop the blood from spilling out. But that may cause blood to flow back down your throat, which may cause choking and gagging of blood, swallowing of blood, and even blood flowing into the lungs. The correct thing to do is to lean slightly forward and pinch the bridge of the nose to allow the blood to safely drain out. I have a question. How do our eyes actually work? Well, when light bounces off an object, it goes into our eyes. Then the light enters the clear outer part of our eye called the cornea, which focuses the light to make it look sharp. Then the light passes through the dark opening in your eye called the pupil, with the iris, the colored part of your eye, controlling how big the pupil gets. And all of those parts work together to focus light into the retina. The retina has 130 million light-sensitive cells, which send signals through the optic nerve. And then finally, into the brain, which creates the images that we see. If blood vessel colors are not really about colors, but about depiction. There are two types of blood vessels, arteries and veins. Arteries are depicted as red because arteries carry oxygen-rich blood, which give it that bright red look, while veins are depicted as blue because they carry poor oxygenated blood going back to the heart. The poor oxygen levels give the veins a dark red look. So to summarize, all blood vessels are red. It's just that arteries are depicted as red and veins are depicted as blue. Can someone please tell me, how do video games actually affect our brain? Sure. Sure I will. Video games have a lot of benefits, but also a lot of disadvantages. So listen closely. Studies show that video games increase both white and gray matter integrity in the brain in both visual and motor pathways, which means better coordination and reaction time. Studies also show better social skills, better perception of objects in three dimensions, better problem solving, and even better academic performance. But here's what's important. It's all in reasonable doses which is around 3 to 4 hours a day. So unless you overdo it, video games are perfectly fine for you. If you ever suffer a burn on your body, never ever use ice or cold water on it. It'll only make the damage worse. Hi, I'm a medical student, and these are medical tips that can help save a life one day. If you ever suffer a burn, use lukewarm running water. It'll stop the burning process and soothe the pain much better. Tip number 2. If someone is suffering a severe allergic reaction, do not give them water, even if they request so. Their throat could be closing in. Water could cause aspiration, bringing water into the lungs. Tip number three. A stroke is one of the most dangerous things that can happen to someone. And when you suspect someone of having a stroke, you have to think fast. No, literally. You have to think fast. It's an acronym to determine if someone is actively having a stroke. F is for face drooping. A side of the face slightly drooping is a sign of a stroke. A for arm drift. Ask the person to raise both of their arms in front of them. If one arm drifts downward, that's a sign of numbness in one side. 
S for slurred speech. Someone having a stroke may have trouble speaking and may sometimes say absolute nonsense. And finally, T for time. If you see any of these signs, call for help immediately. Can someone please tell me why does our brain look like a wrinkly bean? Sure. Sure, I'll tell you. The reason that I think the brain looks like a wrinkly bean is because of the many folds that it has. And those folds have a very specific purpose. The folds are made up of the ridges called the gyri and the grooves called the soci, which are developed before childbirth. The reason the brain folds is to efficiently use the space in the skull. The skull only has so much space, so the brain creates these folds to have more surface area. And more surface area means more neurons and more connections for your brain, making it more effective and more efficient to have more brain power. The new copper golems are here, so let's talk about them. Psych! Let's talk about how our voices work instead. I'm tricking you into learning. Our voice is produced like a musical instrument. First, air comes from the lungs and goes up to the larynx. The larynx is where the vocal cords are located. The vocal cords are muscle tissues that vibrate when air passes through them, which creates the voice. For us to speak, the tongue, mouth, and lips all work together to control the flow of air to create the sounds that we say. Take a look at this. In medicine, there is a sickness that kills 7.5 million people every year, but yet shows no symptoms until it's too late. The silent killer of the medical world, high blood pressure. High blood pressure can be caused by a lot of things, as listed here. But even if you live the healthiest lifestyle, you can still get high blood pressure through your genetics. High blood pressure causes deaths through stroke, kidney damage, and heart attacks. And the only way to combat this is through regular blood pressure checks. Subscribe for more medical content. Can someone please tell me how does taste actually work? Sure. Sure, I'll tell you. See, taste all starts in the tongue. The tongue is filled with these little bumps called papillae. And in the grooves of these papillae are taste buds. These have hair at the ends of them called microvilli which detects the chemicals that give our taste. Then signals are sent through the cranial nerves to our brain. But don't forget about smell. It makes up about 70 to 80% of what we perceive as actual flavor. The brain takes the taste and the smell we detect and turns it into the experience we know as tasting. Are you smarter than a medical student? Can you get a higher score than me in this general medical quiz? Question number one. Which organ pumps blood throughout the body? Okay, come on now. It's obviously the heart. Question number two. What is the largest organ in the body? Okay, still pretty easy. It's the skin. Question number three. Which blood type is known as the universal donor? Okay, really big jump in difficulty, but I do know it. It's type O negative. Question number four. Which part of the brain controls balance and coordination? Okay, I really doubt much people can get this. It's the cerebellum. Question number five. Which cranial nerve is responsible for hearing and balance? Oh, cranial nerves. I've forgotten. Is it the... Vestibulocochlear nerve? Can someone please tell me how does smelling actually work? Sure. Sure, I'll tell you. Smelling first starts with the nose, breathing in small particles of an object. The particles are filtered by 95% of the nasal cavity using the cilia or the nose hair. They then arrive at the olfactory epithelium, a patch of skin covered in mucus that are layers of olfactory receptor cells. These are special neurons that differentiate different smells. Once odor molecules touch these cells, they fire a signal through the olfactory tract and into our brain, which is when we finally know what we're smelling. So if you wanted to ask the question, 